crowd that uh, really wants to come in for the exciting topic of the day. This thing is, um, it may take us most of the 45 minutes for me just to do the title. Driving Profits, Inventory Management, Point of Sale, and Customer Loyalty Programs Panel. I think uh, we could probably dig deep, drill down, and, and uh, cover everything we need to do on all those topics in 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> So why don't we start with just introducing our panel, because we have a couple of different uh, people up here, um, who we are, where we're from, and uh, what we do. Uh, John Griffin, Vice President of Operations for Fast Track Solutions. We are a point of sale, retail automation, inventory controls solution. Uh, we also have warehouse wholesale distribution software, digital signage, and loyalty. Uh, good morning, I'm Tom Allen. I'm the Retail Operations Manager for Smoker Friendly. Uh, oversee the daily operations of 101 uh, retail stores and everything involved with loyalty as well, too. I'm Mo Daher. I'm from Spring Street Cigars in Tupelo, Mississippi, a premium cigar lounge. Good. Just met Mo out back. That's the first time I heard him talk. I didn't even know he was from the South. So there you go. <laughs> Got the best beard on the panel by far. Absolutely. <laughs> so. I don't know, let's just kind of uh, start with um, maybe a simple question. I'll, I'll shoot it John's way, and that's for the retailers that uh, may be looking for a new point of sale system and uh, looking to advance what they're, they're doing in their stores where they have one store or multiple stores and some of the things they ought to be looking for in a, in a good system. And, and I told him out back, I said, you know, you're with the Fast Tracks, go ahead and plug your system all you want. This is free advertising. <laughs> sure. Um, well, starting off, if you know, I always say be the company today that you want to be tomorrow. So you need to evaluate first and foremost your internal operations. And then when you're evaluating systems, how does that system best fit into your current operations? What adjustments are you going to have to make to take that system? And then after you evaluate those things, what does that system offer me not only again today, but tomorrow? What is its growth potential? What does that company look like? What does the solution do? What does it immediately answer for me? And then what things can, over the course of time, and be adapting my procedures, glean from what it has? All right. Since we have a couple of retailers, I, I thought I'd ask both Mo and Tom to, to maybe talk a little bit about the system they currently use and what they look for in that system and, and the reporting functionality, uh, how it helps uh, manage the, cons the consumer, uh, maybe some inventory management, um, the possibility of, uh, you know, bolting on loyalty programs and, and you know, maybe what kind of devices uh, they also use within their systems. Tom, you want yeah. to start? Sure, yeah, it's a great question. Um, uh, for Smoker Friendly, what we use is uh, ECRS Catapult. Uh, it's a fantastic system that's fully integrated within our stores. I think probably one of the best things about that system is how um, the POS allows our managers to be so nimble, really drive our business from the bottom up where uh, the best decisions can be made when you look at who's on the store and who's in the front line and who's making the best call for how we order inventory or what products we're bringing in. Um, and that system itself has a, a great back office support that uh, allows managers to go through a, a plethora of inventory data from 360 degree uh, historical inventory counts and things that look at how much um, you're ordering, when you ordered, what manufacturers you're ordering from, um, to anything that calculates automatic inventory turn ratios, which is very critical, you know, depending on what product you're looking at, your ratio will be different on inventory turn as too much or too little. Um, it's a very uh, simple to use system, uh, very uh, few peripherals that go with it. You know, standard, uh, standard uh, point of sale screens, we have um, credit card readers and uh, uh, just normal scanners and things of that nature. Um, and the best part about it is it comes with its own loyalty program that we 
that we launched last year. Uh, it's fully integrated loyalty programs, really helped reduce a lot of the issues we had with what you see with traditional, you know, um, written down or, or pen and paper pushed loyalty programs where you have shrink issues or sweethearting issues or things like that. And we've seen some great numbers turn out in that. Um, but that's kind of it for, you know, smoker friendly in a nutshell, looking at how our inventory system runs. So what do you have, Mo? Absolutely. We use uh, Square for retail, which is the same Square you know at the local coffee shop. The only difference is it has a lot more uh, advanced inventory functions. It has employee management. It has advanced reporting functions. Uh, it's, it's really nice in that it's easy and it's approachable. It's easy to use. It's easy to find. So you can pick up everything you need to run it at a local retail store, Best Buy, or something similar. And it integrates well with other third-party solutions so that you can, uh, if you have multiple locations as you grow, you can add on a, a more advanced inventory management uh, system to it. Uh, you've got the customer loyalty programs that are a part of it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great system for somebody uh, smaller starting out that wants to grow. That's good. Um, really, when you're looking at those systems, you know, one of the things that the, uh, the retailer looks for is really how does it improve the overall customer experience when you put in, you know, new point of sale or existing point of sale to, to give that consumer a good, good experience within the store. John, you, you might take it from a manufacturer standpoint. Um, well, you know, first and foremost is making sure, you know, from a retailer's standpoint, you're tracking the products, they're properly in there, they're properly priced, if you're doing system discounts, or those things properly firing at the proper times, at those specific thresholds, um, are you able to report on those things? But as far as customer experience goes, what is the ease of use for those cashiers? Do I have the ability to be flexible and offer these diversified discounting and loyalty campaigns to reward them, you know, am I a retailer that I'm kind of stuck in the mindset of a punch card type thing, or am I willing to go out and try different campaign styles based off of the success of redemption from my customers? And by gauging and really honing in of those successful type campaigns, for instance, talking about a customer experience, that means I'm actually seeing what works, that means that's what they like, so I'm focusing on that and expanding upon that. So in a retail system such as ours, you know, that's a lot of the data that we're giving you back is those trends and those movement type things to gauge the success. And then, you know, some of our other additional solutions when it comes to loyalty, you know, the ability to use, you know, I may be getting ahead of myself here, but with social media feedback, you know, what am I seeing when I'm announcing those campaigns and marketing those things, the likes? and the shares, that right there in itself tells me what I should be going after because that's my consumer base. And if they're reacting to those things in that way and then I'm seeing that return based off, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Those are the things I'm focusing on. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Mo? What, what, what do you think about that uh, from a, a customer experience standpoint and you, your system and really making that transaction a, a good experience for the consumer? Absolutely, yes. You want something that uh, allows the checkout process to be very seamless, very quick. So uh, a good barcoding system, something that can scan, charge very quickly, uh, something that tracks their purchases, um, allows them to save their card on file. There's so many times somebody's sitting in the lounge and asks for a cigar, we can grab it, charge it to their card on file. They never have to leave their seat. So it keeps them in the lounge longer and keeps them uh, buying more product. Mm -hmm. Tom? Yeah, I think with um, when we came out and we launched Smoke and Rewards for Smoker Friendly, uh, the two ways we really approached it were ease of use, and ease of use for the customer and ease of use for our employees. And um, when you come into our store and you sign up for the program, it's a very quick process that just requires a phone number, a birth date. We're looking for an email address, but if we don't get it, you know, we'll, we'll continue to try to engage that customer and, and receive that data so that we can engage in that social media sphere that we were talking about. But it's simple for our employees to understand, and it's very simple and fast for the customer to understand. It's just a phone number to enter. You're automatically logged in. Everything is done through the system. There's a zero paper except for uh, the points that you earn are displayed on the receipt. And it's, it's been a fantastic feedback loop that we've seen so far with that, removing just time and energy from managers having to train on, on traditional punch card programs and things like that, it, and it's very streamlined. And the other thing about it is the back office of that system allows our managers to 
edit um, their customer profiles and allows them to manage their, their actual loyalty customer base and really keep that one-to-one -one relationship that we strive to have so much. So let's talk a little bit about inventory management because as we see you know, new technology come into the marketplace, uh, brand extensions, the cost of goods spiraling upwards, you know, very important to, to, to manage our cash and, and uh, you know, keep control of that inventory both from a, you know, a, a shrink perspective but also really good inventory management to, to, to watch our, our cash flow. And so, I don't know, maybe if you could touch, Mo, a little bit on, on how you work with your inventory management within your store and your system and, and what it does for you. Of course. Um, what's great about an inventory management system, you're not just looking at a snapshot. When you look around, if you don't have one, that's what you have. And you don't know where you've been, you don't know how you got there, and you don't know where you're going. So inventory management can really tell you um, what you have on hand, how it sells, what's not selling, um, allows you to figure out how much product you have on hand so you can budget for the next year. And you can see the trends of what's selling, where you need to put more emphasis. You may find a category that you didn't realize sells as well as it does, and you need to invest more time growing that part of it, uh, devote more retail space to that product category. So Tommy, on that question, I mean, some of the, the uh, reporting functionality and, and what you're u using to expand on what Mo said to, to really look at those categories, look at those brands, um, and then, you know, what is moving quickly, but also, as, as Mo said, you know, what are the, the slow or dead products that uh, you know we need to move out of the system and get that money back yeah from a reporting functionality standpoint um, two of the reports that our managers use uh, all the time are you're looking at a zero item movement report and then also a, a four month movement report um, and we use those reports not only one to see where product could potentially be transferred to another store and, and increase the profitability or the chance for sales but also from the, um, the, the zero item movement report, you can empower the supervisors to uh, make, make key decisions where if, if product needs to be written off, if product needs to be transferred. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of it's where we come from on those. Those are the two reports that we look at uh, m most of the time when we're, when we're uh, training managers and empowering supervisors to really make quick inventory decisions that have to be made on a daily basis. So, so since you come from a, you know, a chain background, how, do you, how, does, how does the system um, really empower and, and aid your category managers in terms of making their buying decisions, whether you know, they're looking at the premium cigar uh, category or they might be in the, you know, the e-liquid, e, e e-vape, e-cigarette category, and, and how those guys uh, tap into uh, the point of sale and, and how it flows back through to your general ledger and they're able to get the information they need to make good decisions from corporate. Right, no, it's a great question. Um, when our two category directors are looking at that, it's the most powerful thing that that system provides them is the large aggregate data that it can pull in and allow them to make a decision over the course of, you know, looking at data over three months, six months, a year. It can go even farther out than that. Um, and they can also drill down into each specific category. They can drill down into each specific product, and they can actually, and then they can actually filter that data by uh, by stores, by territories, by price point, things of that nature. Um, so I think the uh, how nimble the system is and how malleable the system is is extremely important um, to category managers or, or folks within that level who are making those big inventory decisions for a, an entire company. It's uh, very critical. John, maybe you touch on that from a manufacturer perspective. And when you're going to, to see these retailers and, and you're selling your, your product and you've got a lot of background, a lot of experience, you've got a lot of systems out there, maybe touch on those selling points on the inventory management piece and, and, and how, how fast, fast tracks does it. Yeah, sure. I mean, inventory in itself is a simple word, but it's a broad, it's a broad thing. It encompasses a lot because you've got the, you know, the evaluation of sales and movement, you've got the ordering process, you've got loss prevention, um, you've got sales trends, you know, am I overstocked here, am I understocked here, where am I moving it to, what am I suggesting based off of all this data evaluation. So, you know, first and foremost, it's price book management. That's where it's got to start is price book management. I've got to get that clean, I've got to get that categorized, and in doing those things, that helps me to do things like Tom said, which yeah. is drill down to evaluate these specific things in these movements. 
Um, so when you're looking at things like non-seller, slow seller reports, um, inventory movement reports, suggested transfers, and you're evaluating that over, say, a 10 or 12 week period, and what's moving here, what's not moving here, because as you know, being out of stock is terrible, that's lost sales. But being overstocked is bad as well, because that's money you've already put out and it's sitting there not doing anything. So I've gotta get that moved somewhere. I need to get that somewhere where it is going to sell for me. Um, you know, and then you gotta think of other things too when you are evaluating these non-slow seller reports. Why is that not moving, or is there a way I can move it? You know, so what other abilities do you have? Well, do you have the ability to, say, spiff or commission those things? So you can begin campaigns because I tell you, if you have an item that's sitting there, the best way to move it is say, I'm gonna give you 25 cents for every one of these you sell. And that's gonna be the best product you ever had in your store at that point. So again, that's where I say inventory, you're evaluating the movement, what I need, using things like that robust data evaluation to pull out those scheduled orders, you know, getting out of the mindset of I'm sticking to a min max. You know, the, the day of each month, the quarter of each month, the season of the years, those sales are different. And you can't say I need 10 of these minimum and 50 of these max and that's it because it changes seasonally. Right. So you, you, by having that ability to be flexible and agile, as you said, to come in and look at these things, um, doing things like days of inventory, is for instance, for generating an order and evaluating those time periods and breaking those into those smaller categories. Another great thing about inventory management is when it comes to things like loss prevention and counting, right? You know, a lot of people get set in this, I'm gonna count once a quarter or annually or biannually, and it's, why? You should be counting regularly all the time. And I know with us, for instance, with those categories I talked about, you can build out bespoke definitions to try to encourage more regular counting, make that a regular thing, because if you're really keeping an eye on that, A, you're eliminating potential loss, but you're also evaluating movement proactively right then and there that you can instantly react to. And you have to be agile like that. You gotta get out of the mindset of it's gonna happen, it's gonna come to me. No, you have to be on top of it. Maybe you're segueing into that, yeah, Tom. You can talk, I, talk a little bit about that. On right, uh, just what John said, when you, when you look at the count, how, how agile is the system to empower managers and associate level employees to do those weekly counts that are so critical for proper inventory control and inventory management. And then on the other hand, how well does the system integrate into your internal audit function? What does your audit look like? How often are you auditing? How well does that system work with it? Does it work with it at all? If, if it doesn't, then you're probably not looking at the right system, you know, how, how critical that all is. Do you have anything with audits or internal counting, Mo? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you need to be able to do those cycle counts. Like you said, you need to be doing them all the time and uh, you need to have reports that show the cycle counts are being done. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe Tom, uh, you know, since you're coming from the, you know, company that has internal auditors because of the scale, right? maybe you could touch on what the, uh, you know, your inter internal audit team does and how, how they do their counts and, and what their schedules are like and how that ties back into the inventory management so that, uh, you know, if you've got 105 stores out there, you know, where's all your inventory? Right, yeah, no, great question. And, and, your, and your inventory is, is gonna be a little bit broader because you're more total tobacco than, sure. say, premium tobacconist, so you're gonna go from everywhere from glass to, to cigarettes to moist to uh, machine-made cigars to alternative products yeah. uh, to premium cigars and just about everything in between accessories so maybe you get in touch on that for us well the biggest thing that we work with on our internal auditing team is setting the proper schedule we we operate on a, a one month count schedule and then we cycle our our, our categories that we're going to count there's always a, a set amount of count that gets done within what we call our basic audit and from a, a mixed category store like that we operate in you know you're always looking at cigarettes you're always looking at um, uh, moist, we also do some stuff with lottery, lotto, th those types of counts. And then obviously verifying cash is the most crucial thing that you can do and making sure that a, uh, a, a system works with you know cash verification, safe and, safe and bank deposits, all those daily functions of the business that are so crucial to, to make sure that you have what you need in order to be successful. Um, and it's difficult, it's very difficult with a, a, such a mixed category store that we have. The, the auditors do a, a fantastic job. It's always a, It's always a challenge to make sure that the counts are being done in a timely manner. The counts are being done so that they don't interfere with the day's business because um, we, we always operate our audits on a nighttime count schedule. Uh, and, you know, just kind of getting back into it, 
you, you really have to prioritize what the audit should look like and then set, you know, set your goals of what you're, what you're prepared to, to lose, not only from a, a cost standpoint, but also from a retail standpoint as well too. And when do those flags pop up in the system to allow uh, upper management to come in and evaluate the audit and how it was done and, and what's exactly missing. You know, it all, it, I think it all stems through how well you look at the categories, what category is being counted and what should be expected in that category. And do you establish metrics for each category in terms of shrink and what it is as a percentage of your cost and, and how does that look within your Right. Uh, can you ask it again, Terry? Just, you know, what percentage of shrink because of the, 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 uh, the way you do the scheduled audits and, and how you handle that audit and the mm -hmm. cycle counts and everything, just kind of putting you on the spot. What kind of shrink do you do you see then within you know within a company right. because of that attention to detail? Sure. Well, it, it's it's a question that we can't necessarily answer just in a, in a general sense because we look at the categories. So uh, we are the vast majority of our stores are age restricted. Tobacco is a place behind the counter. So or, excuse me, our, our cigarettes are behind the counter. So, for instance, with, when we look at the cigarette category, you know, any loss that we see within a cigarette count, n not only is the manager of the store should be doing uh, their counts weekly, but when an audit comes down and we're seeing a loss that can't be explained, it just is immediately a red flag uh, for us because everything, everything is isolated away from the customer. So it brings up a lot more uh, questions very quickly about what's going on with that inventory. It's, it, it becomes much more complicated when you're looking at products that are readily available on the floor and what the, what the shrinkage rate you know, would, would set off there. I think one of our best things that we do is with our supervisors in our stores, they know their stores very well and they know their internal shrink metrics that is gonna immediately bring them in or their, or their area manager to address a count issue or an inventory dollar issue. Yeah. Well, I'll shift gears a little bit here and, and uh, Mo, you're, you're talking to a peer out here in the audience and, and uh, you're talking about point of sale what, what uh, type of reports would you recommend them that, you know, this is what at a minimum you've got to have as, as a good retailer to really be able to manage your business well? Well, I'd really like to see <clears throat> total inventory on hand. It's really good to know what you have because you can walk in and you can look at it, but you don't really know what the value of that is. And, it, and it's really hard when stuff, stuff stacked up at the top to see what exactly is up there. But I also like to see uh, sales by item so I can see what's selling, what's not selling. And then I like to layer those two reports so I can kind of see how, mu how long is the product I have on hand gonna last me? How long before it all sells out? So that I can be more predictive. I can order before I'm out. Because once you're out, you've upset a customer. You've provided a bad experience. So uh, at the store level, you need to make sure you're able to make those, you need to have the reports that allow you to make the decisions uh, to run the store efficiently. So if, if I'm coming to John and you know I want to buy a, a point of sale system, I, I'd, I'd ask him, you know, what kind of reports do you have, and you know, are they customizable? You know, what what's the dashboard look like? You know, is it going to be ease of use for for training and, and from a cashier up to a store manager? And what's what's the training period kind of like so that you get up to speed? Maybe you could address that a little bit. Sure. Yeah, I'll start with the report side of it. Um, I mean. In, in Fast Tracks, there's you know hundreds of reports that have hundreds of thousands of different variations of ways you can run those based off of whatever options you're choosing when you do that. Might be overkill, but there's also those people that want to specifically dial into those things. Now, having said that, those are constantly growing, always growing. I mean, it's it's daily. There's some you know we get feedback from our customers, which is how we build our system. Maybe not as quickly as some would like sometimes, but you know of things they would like to add or tweak or change. So first and foremost, all of our reports, for instance, are exportable, so you can export those and tweak and change whatever you need to do with that to reorganize. But then we have customer reporting with that as well. Um, but as far as some basis ideas of reports, you know, ones that I suggest are things like item sales, like Mo just referenced, you know, um, hourly sales, sales trends, the non-seller, slow seller, that one to me is like, that's one of the penultimate ones that's overlooked so much for an evaluation of movement. Inventory evaluation, like he said, I'd like to see a total on hand and what does the value look like right now? Suggested transfers in itself is, 
is a great report just because of how much time a lot of our customers that we have brought on have said, this saves me, you know, X amount of hours a week from where I was having to take these different reports and evaluate them. Now I get one report, it's scheduled to run on this day at this time for me, it's emailed to me, so wherever I am, I see it and, I, and I'm seeing the layout of what I need to transfer. All of those time, cons you know, time saving things. Um, negative, the negative cashier actions report is another one. That's, you know, that's basically voids, cancels, right. no sells, returns, those types of things. That report is very important when you're talking about inventory movement and inventory evaluations and all things that to be able to read. And when you're laying those and you're laying those across and you're looking, it starts to really paint that picture of what's happening in your store or chain of stores. Um, what was the last part I forgot? <laughs> uh, customizable, you know, uh, the, the yeah. reports. Yeah, now, one thing that we are working on right now as well is we're really looking and getting to get into business intelligence. So not only will these reports spin up a lot faster, but they are a lot more customizable for our end user to actually come in and choose that specific data that they're wanting to do and do a lot of stacking of data for things that don't really normally make sense. You know, we get set into this, I run this report and this report and this report and this report and I gotta look at them. Well, when you're getting into BI and predictive uh, analytics at that point, you're now taking that data and you're throwing it in a pot and you're saying, okay, I wanna see this, 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 and this, which would usually be disparate pieces of data. Now I'm getting to see them overlaid you know, a lot of times graphically hot spots, looking at store movements and trends, and I'm getting this almost singular report instantly that I can see that's got every little bit I want. Yeah, uh, it's been a long time since I looked at a, at a point of sale and, and uh, was evaluating to purchase, but uh, if you're doing it today, and I would assume that most point of sale systems would, would have the feature that, you know, I would want, and that's, the, is it fully integrated to the general ledger? Can, can I take all my data from that point of sale, and can I drop it down? Can I have my P&L for the store? Can I funnel that into my financials? Can I, can I create an income statement, a balance sheet for my business, whether it's one store or a thousand stores? Yeah, I mean, for us, again, with those reports being exportable, and we do have those reports that are able to be fed or imported into uh, an accounting package, depending on which one you have. Again, the custom ability is there because as a lot of you already know, know me and know our product, um, you know, we're willing and able he to do whatever. He got all his customers to come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're willing and always able to do what we can to, to go into that. Um, the problem a lot of times that we have found through the years when it comes to that is if we're, if we're not gonna build it ourselves and we're depending on a third party solution for that, you're talking integrations and if they change anything, it, it becomes a nightmare sometimes yeah. logistically. So both of you guys touched on it a little bit on the loyalty side and, mm -hmm. and I wanna come back to that. And, um, and, and I'll really start with you, John, because you're talking to multiple retailers out there. You're, you're looking across the country, so you have a lot of touch points and, and probably have a good opinion and, and see what's going on out there. But, how, how are the top retailers leveraging their loyalty programs in today's uh, environment? How are, how are they leveraging that customer loyalty program? Sure. Um, well, first and foremost, it starts with the willingness to step off the ledge and do some of these things. Again, like I said earlier, not getting stuck in this whole, I do a punch card and that's what I do, and or I did this loyalty thing 10 years ago and it didn't do me very good, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really interested in doing that. So, you know, some of the ways they are leveraging it, for instance, with our system, is just the vast abilities of ways to automate and handle things automatically there, but instantly reward them. Um, so when you're going to a vendor or manufacturer, whatever, talking about leveraging and saying, I can do these 80 different things, whether it's spiffing my employees or I'm giving discounts off of these uh, volume or a percentage off when this item is bought or I can do stealth things if you buy this I'm gonna spit a coupon out for this item over here for the next time or like in our system we have uplifts for instance you know which is the when they're scanning this item there's dialogue up for the cashier the read off whatever that deal is you're ensuring that your customer knows about it on the customer facing display that ad that's applicable to that pops up and the customer sees it so you know the message is being given to that. So when you're coming to them with that breadth of tools, you know, another thing I like to say about our solution is we have professional level tools for the little guy. You know, it's, you're not having to go to a bespoke software development house to get this. These are the same tools the big guys use. Yeah. 
So when I'm able to come to them with this and say, this is what I can do. Now, have I prepared a tiered out system? You know, this, 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 and this is what I would like to do. This is what that looks like. Are we, are we gonna charge membership fees or am I gonna charge a fee straight to you to do this or are you gonna do this on the back end? Those are some of the things that are I'm not sure if I answered your question. No, yeah, Bob, I think so. I, um, I, I saw the wave out there that uh, our 45 goes by pretty quick. We wanna <laughs> open it up for some questions, but. <laughs> Just uh, maybe a couple of uh, bullet points as, you know, as a retailer and you're looking for a new system or you're looking to upgrade, whatever it might be, and um, we talked a little bit in the back, uh, you know, some simple questions to ask. You know, what does tech support look like from a company? You know, does it cost you additional dollars? Does the system improve the overall customer experience? These guys right. talked about that. Yep. Does the point of sale system generate all your needed reports? What happens in the event of an internet outage? Is the system scalable if you want to grow your business? Uh, does, does the manufacturer have a history of reliability and customer satisfaction? Uh, is there ongoing maintenance and or upgrade fees as you, as you continue to look? Is training extra? Um, what sort of peripheral devices are needed, scanners, tablets, other devices to get the most out of the system? Um, there's a, a myriad, I think, of other questions that are out there to, to really um, you know, think about as you look at a system and, and really get the most out of your system, but that, that's just a few. So um, I, I appreciate the, the panel being here, and I, I do want to open it up for questions, and if we have any, um, we've got about uh, 10 minutes to take a few, so. Yeah. Sounds good. Any questions? I see I one up here, Ben, in a green shirt. All right, here we go. Yep, he, there he I'm is. I'm blind. I think I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> you have to ask somebody else. <laughs> It is who you think it is. <laughs> uh, my question is for John. Uh, with the little time we have left, can you just slightly touch on, a little bit on the new program for scan data for Altria and Philip Morris? And is your system able to produce these reports to submit to these manufacturers and distributors? Yes. Good question. I'm, that, that's a good question. And you know, the short answer is yes. <laughs> Um, and as far as the details of the actual program itself or, or how are we handling it? Yeah, I mean, as far as, as far as in our solution itself, if you're, you know, we, we have the loyalty piece already in there. So for those loyalty required and data sending uh, pieces for the actual customers, that's collected. Um, you know, how do you get that information? Well, you know, for one thing in our POS, if you're utilizing a two-dimensional barcode scanner, you can simply scan a driver's license, and that's how you're identifying the unique uh, customer as well as age verification, right? Um, as far as the report itself, how does that work? Um, the report is, you're running it, and when I say you, I don't mean you literally have to go in and hit it. You can if you want. You can schedule that guy. It automatically generates, and it FTPs to them. Was, it, was that ESA out there? The, uh, Tom, you might touch on that too, because I know we went through a lot of uh, implementing the, the Altria system to right. get that up and going, and, and it's been very successful. Right. Was there another question that was just asked, though, as well? Did you have another question? No. 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 That was it. Oh. Yeah, yeah I, I would really just echo everything that, that, okay. that John just said. Um, how easy does, how, how easy are you to, able to um, aggregate scan data and, and send it in? Uh, we have much smarter people than myself who work on all that uh, within our uh, corporate office, but um, the ease of use of it is absolutely critical. And, and identifying, you know, does your does your system support that? And and, and how we're looking at loyalty from now and, and, and heading on in the future, I think we're just we'll always be looking at, you know, scan data, what yeah. can be brought out of it, and, and how does that integrate with the large manufacturers? And, and I so think that you know you, you could iron the, the, rule. The, the, Kind of the proof is in the pudding. I think that right. that, that that program has definitely given a lift within our stores in in units sure. with their brands. So it, it's yeah. Any absolutely. other questions? Good question. Any questions? Raise your hand. No. I got a general question for you guys. How or the best way to go about choosing the right POS system view store? Any sort of points on on that? Uh, yeah, where we started is we just asked other tobacconists, what do you use and what do you like about it and what do you not like about it and uh, tell us tell us everything. And, and we just kind of compiled that information and, and we looked at it and we said, does this fit our needs? Does it do everything we need it to do? Uh, what are the disadvantages? What are the costs? And, and we just kind of started from there. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think Mo hit it on the head completely. You know, what does the scalability look like? Uh, what does our business plan look like for the future? Can that system adapt to it? Would also be you know key questions that I would ask as well. And is it the same whether you're a single store or multi stores? Same process. I would, yeah, I would go with the exact same process as well too. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. I think we're close to time. Is there anything else you guys want to finish up with or have a quick chat? Any points or questions you I, had? I think the only thing I would add in regards to that last question, Ben, I know I'm not a retailer, but having speaking with retailers about my product a lot and just staying neutral and non-biased and asking them what their evaluation is, is again, what these guys kind of said, what does the scalability look like? But also looking, what products are they introducing and how are they focusing on my industry? You know, there's lots of solutions that are general retail solutions out there, but I'm in a specific industry that has specific nuances. How are you covering that? How are you accounting for that? And, you know, I thank that gentleman for asking the scan data question. You know, that's one thing that we do. Um, you know, when it comes to age verification on items, uh, when it comes to sales limits on an item, I can't buy more than five of this in this single transaction or I have to be this age to buy it on this time, but this age to buy this other locked item. <laughs> sure. You know, yeah. how are they, ha do they have the ability to do that? Do they have the ability to say, no, you gotta have a driver's license because I'm tired of getting deemed yeah. for selling to underage people. Can I force that? What am I able to get from that customer and track that customer? At the end of the day, those are the things you need to evaluate. Do they have a loyalist solution that allows me to directly get to them on their mobile device and tell them what I'm doing in my store or is this something I'm gonna only do if they walk in and my cashier just happens to remember to tell them about this program we're doing? Because you get them in the store, but the hardest part is just that, getting them into the store. And once they're there, they're your customer. Now, how am I keeping you know, them alerted to what we're doing? Okay, good points. Any other questions as we wrap this session up? No? I'd like to thank you guys for your time and yeah, sharing thank your you. expertise. Thank you very much. If you guys uh, have any other questions, uh, we'll be stop by and find them in that booth, Fast Tracks, yep. thank and you guys. Uh, Smoker Friendly. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you very much.